16, 16, so says the word of God. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which, which he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty handed. Now, let's go to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. Verse 23 and 24. Exodus 20, uh, 34. Verse 23 and 24. Three times in the year, all your men shall appear before the Lord God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither will any man covet your land when you go out to appear before the Lord your God three times in a year. And I will read it again. For I will cast up the nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither will any man covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in a year. Amen? Amen. May God bless preaching of this word. You know, it's no secret to anyone, and I always, always make it pretty clear how much I love to travel. I love to travel. Even though I travel to Atlanta, it's a traveling to me. It's a trip. I love traveling. And but the most, I mean, the best part, the best part of all the trips I take is when I get back home. Because as they say, there is no place like home. So I like traveling. I, 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 I like visiting, knowing uh, new places. But the best part for me is to come back home. And since uh, God brought us here, uh, <clears throat> Anna and I are always uh, anxious when we come back to see that sign when it's written, Sweet Home Alabama. And when we see that sign, we really say, this sign has so much to do with us because we feel that like Alabama is really our home. We feel like home here. It's a special place for us. Every day when I go to work and I cross uh, 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 the, the uh, oh my God, and I, and I see the mountains, and I see the lake, and I thank God for bringing us to such a beautiful and peaceful and wonderful place. And we love everything here. We love the, the Thorsonage, the church. We love you, everything. The people here are so friendly. You know, people who live in Rio de Janeiro, they are the, one of the, if not, they are the most friendly people in Brazil. I don't know if it's because Rio is the most touristic city in Brazil, but people in Rio are very friendly. When we came here, we felt like home, because people here are really friendly too. So this is a very special place for us, and we always thank God for this place we can call home. And why am I saying this? Because I'm going to tell you something that you'll be amazed at this morning. Say, no, I can't believe Pastor Rob saying that. It seems so silly, but places are very important for us. We never stop to think about places. Oh, come on, places? Have you ever thought of that? Places are very important to us. The place we live. For example, have you ever noticed that when you come to church, you park your car in the same parking spot? It's always the same place. When you walk, when you walk, walk into the church, you always sit in the same place you sit every Sunday. I, I know when, when, when somebody doesn't come to church, we could have 10,000 people here. But if one person was missing the service, I would know because we always sit in the same place. When you were a 
at school, every day when you go to class, did you see the differences? It's always the same thing. So sometimes we don't realize, but places are very important to us. And let me tell you something, for God as well. Places are very important to God. When God created heaven and earth, what did he create first? A place. <laughs> the Garden of Eden. All, of all the earth, of all the things he created in the world, the first thing he created was what? The garden. And he created a special place. And after that, he created man and woman. Before he created what? A place for them to live and to take care of them. You know, when, when God set his people free from bondage in Egypt, Egypt what did he do? He took them to a place, to the wilderness, to treat them, to test their faith and faithfulness to him. And why in the wilderness? Because he had already prepared another place for them to live, Canaan, the promised land. So you see, everything places has everything to do with God. Then the people said, we don't want to talk to God. We are afraid of him. Moses, you talk to him. Then God said, I'm going to prepare a place for me to talk to the people. And what was this place? The tabernacle. Moses, if the people want to talk to me, they have to come to this place. Because they cannot talk to me everywhere. There will be a special place. After that, years after that, David conquers uh, the land of the Jebusites. And he called that city Jerusalem. And, uh, and God said, this is my city. The city of the great God. God chooses Jerusalem to be his city. The city of his heart. His favorite city. We don't know why, but Jerusalem is the city of God. He chose that city. That's why you see all the, the war and battle struggles happening in the promised land in Israel. Because they want Jerusalem. But Jerusalem belongs to God and to his people. Then when God, after that, David, not after that, when David conquered Jerusalem, he said, I will build a place to worship God. It was the temple. And I could tell about a lot of places. Where were we saved? Who saved us? Who saved us? Who is our Savior? Jesus Christ. Where did he save us? On the cross. In a place. In a mountain. In the Golgotha. So places are very important to God. And why am I saying that? Because... There are many commandments in the law of God, in the Old Testament, and many teachings of Jesus, that if we want to be obedient to them, we, have to, we will have to be very careful to be on the right place, the places God wants us to be. God told the people of Israel, it's in the law, we have just read, three times a year, in the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, and at the end of the year, all male will have to go to the place I will designate. Right? After David conquered Jerusalem, the Lord said, you go up to Jerusalem three times for the Passover, for the Sukkot, and for Pentecost, the three feasts. And all the males shall go and worship the Lord and, and bring offerings to the Lord. But there is something interesting here. And something really amazing. You know, since Israel became a people, he, uh, Israel has been uh, hated by the word. Because Israel represents God. It's the uh, evidence, that the, one of the evidence that there is really a God. And everybody wants to destroy the people of Israel because if you destroy the people of Israel, you destroy their God. 
And God told them, you, you will go three times, all the males. Listen, what happens if a man leaves his house? The man is the one who protects the house. God created men one to provide and to protect. But God said to them three times a year, all the male, all the men, they will have to go out to Jerusalem. And you will leave women and children by themselves. Can you imagine the people around, all the people around? So, oh, three times the, the, all the men will be there. There will be no man. There will be nobody to fight against us. We can go and destroy these people. We can take everything. We can conquer their land again. But God said, if you obey me and go to the place that I'm heading you to, I will protect your families. I will protect your women and children. And nothing will happen. We have just read here. The Lord said, verse 23 and 24 of Exodus, uh, Exodus 34. And the Lord says, yes, Exodus 34. The verse 23 and 24. 24. I will cast out the nations before you. I will cast them out. If they think of coming. And destroying you, I will cast them out. Listen, he said, I, the, I, the Lord Almighty. So he's telling the man, you can, man, you can go. Because your women and children, your possessions, your men, will not divide themselves. Because I will be with them. If anything try something against you, I will cast them out. In other words, I will wipe them out. Nothing will happen to them, but do what? Obey me. Go. You know, for many years, around about 400 years, Israel didn't obey this commandment. And there is a book in the Bible who talks about that. A whole book. It's called Judges. After Joshua died, many years after, Generations passed, and the people of Israel stopped uh, stop obeying the word of God. And what happened? Other people came and conquered Israel. That's why every 40 years, the Lord had to raise what? Judges to deliver Israel from other people who attacked them. And we have Deborah, and we have Samuel, we have Samson. We have Gideon. They, they were judges of Israel. Why God had to raise up judges? Because the people didn't obey them. But my point here is that if you obey the Lord, and if you are in the right place where God wants you to be, you don't have to worry about anything because He is going to be with you. And by obeying these, and by obeying the Word of God, and being in the right place God wants us to be, this is give us some sense. This is this gives us a sense of three things I want to share with you. First of all, when we are in the right place, it gives us a sense of protection. God said, You go, your women and children possessions, your land will be here, but I will be with you. I will what? Protect them. First, 2 Samuel 22, 3, 